Hi, I'm Gene Oriema. We are very proud of the program we have built at the University of Connecticut. This show is about the very special women who have made UConn basketball what it is today. Joining me is an integral part of our 1995 undefeated championship team and 1997 National Player of the Year. Today, we talk basketball with Kara Walters. Hi there, Kyle Walters. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> I'm doing great. The Legacy Show, and obviously, you can't have a Legacy Show without Kara Walters. Yeah. Who left such a long shadow, <laughs> no pun intended, Yes. at UConn. But before you got to UConn, uh, there were a lot of things going on during your early... <laughs> career yes early going back to uh to high school mm -hmm. there were some challenges for you weren't there yeah there were a lot of challenges for me um it, it's not always easy when you're so big and kids are mean and it was hard and basketball was kind of my outlet and it was what i loved doing and i was bigger and um i wasn't as athletic so nothing came easy to me i think that's one of the misconceptions people have, oh, you're so tall, must have been easy for you. And it wasn't. I had to work harder because I did have a lot of obstacles to overcome with all my bigness. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you knew. Yeah. You recruited me. So every, every, everybody just assumed that you should be a basketball player. But were you playing because, as you said, you loved the game? Or were you playing... Uh, well, my friends are playing, so I'm going to play. And someday I'm going to get a scholarship and go to college. That's why I'm playing. Uh, I don't think I thought about the scholarship to college thing early on. Certainly not. If, I, if you had asked me if I thought I'd have done what I, what I did at college and I thought that when I was young, no, not at all. Um, maybe there was a little bit of, of that I'm supposed to play because mm -hmm. I'm so big. Mm -hmm. um, but there really wasn't a time where I didn't want to play. But there were expectations. Everyone assumes, oh, you're tall, you're going to play basketball. Right. So I think at first going into it, I'm tall, I'm supposed to play. But not long after that. When did you realize that, all right, so I'm like doing this with this AAU team and I'm playing, I'm having fun, blah, blah, blah. And oh my God, I'm being recruited by colleges to go to school there. It when did that happen? Crazy. It was crazy, actually, because I'm not as athletic, and I am tall, and you can't teach height. That's true. Right. But at the same time, you have to see something in somebody, and I think a lot of coaches overlooked me because they said, she's too big, she's too slow, she's not athletic enough. I'm not Which sure were all true, it. by the way. <laughs> Yes. So you can't fault all the coach. All those things uh -huh. are absolutely true. I, I know. And okay. that's why to this day, okay. I appreciate that you <laughs> saw something in me right. that you recruited me. That's right. And actually, you guys recruited me early on mm -hmm. um, compared to a lot of schools. But at the end, there were a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon right. at the end. And I was like, no, I don't know if you remember my recruiting trip. Um, How could I not my that? recruiting trip necessarily. Your, my home visit. Uh -huh. Because I basically followed you out to the car and was like, I want to come, I want to come to Connecticut. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, why don't you go talk to your parents yeah, yeah. about it? Yeah, because so, I wasn't sold on it yet. <laughs> I know. I like, whoa, I came here, but I'm not expecting you to commit right yeah. this second. Yeah. But I did. I remember like following you out to the car. Yeah. I was like, okay, I want to come. And you're like, slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well, you know, I, I think kids do get caught up in the excitement of it. Yeah. And... People telling you how good you are, people telling you how much they want you. Right. It's pretty intoxicating for, for a young kid. Yeah, you know? definitely. And you decide you want to go to Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Being there with Rebecca Lobo mm -hmm. and Jennifer Rosati. That helped a little bit. Two very understanding, very appreciative <laughs> people who are willing to overlook all the things yeah. that you're not doing. I'm sure they helped you tremendously. They How did that did. go? They did. They just <laughs> let me take my time and it's just <laughs> not. Uh, absolutely. For as great as you are, uh, also my teammates. Surrounding myself with 
them was amazing. I remember you used to call Rebecca the worst post player in America every yep. day. And she said, I was so happy when you got here because now you were the worst, worst post That's player right. in America every That's day. Right. Um, part of the whole thing is wanting to do it for your teammates because you see them working their butt off, like even in preseason. And you, you see what Jen Rosati does and the level that she plays at. And she expects a lot from her teammates. And that expectation from players like that um, is really what helps me become a better player. And it's the accountability that you learn. And your teammates were holding you accountable. You right. weren't going to get away with slacking off because of them. So obviously surrounding yourself with teammates like that makes you better. Coming up on Gino's Legacy. You really felt like, wow, we, we can do this. We can do anything. This is a huge change in everything. Leading up to that national championship, um, you're, you're a big part of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And you're a sophomore. Mm -hmm. And all the attention's on Rebecca Lobo. Right. And all the attention that isn't getting Rebecca Lobo is on Jen Rosati. That's right. And then all of a sudden, there you are. Right. So you were kind of... I snuck up on him. Which is hard to believe. You're 6'8", <laughs> and you were under the radar. It's pretty high radar. That's right. So... That's right. That's what... That's, that helped you, kind of. Of course, yeah. not kind of. Right. I mean, everyone's focusing on Rebecca Lobo. And it's tough shoes to n not fill, obviously, Rebecca's there, but to be behind in Rebecca. I mean, you have this fantastic player, and you're like the backup to her. And then all of a sudden, you're playing with her, and you're starting with her. Um, that's like, wow, I'm playing at her level. And, and that put some pressure on me to want to play well when you're playing with one of the best players. But when you're on the court, they, what are they going to do, focus on me? Then Rebecca's going to kill them. What are they going to do, not pay attention to Jen? It made my life a lot easier. Right. It's almost not fair. Um, there's some players that have been a lot better than me and were a lot better than me back then, but they didn't have that supporting cast. Do you think that that Tennessee game in January uh, kind of defined that team, that from that, that day on, mm -hmm. nothing was ever going to be the same? Yes, I do. That was huge. It was huge for us, for the sport. It was such a great rivalry um, back in the day. And but not that day. No. That was the first time we'd ever played That's that. right. That's right. So there was no rivalry. That's right. But you knew about Tennessee. I knew about Tennessee and, and what they've done and how good they are. And it was just such a huge, exactly, like you said, it, it was, you really felt like, wow, we, we can do this. We can do anything. This is a huge change in everything. It, it just, it did. I think it kind of changed things and defined things. And it was really special. It was a special win. Now, all of a sudden, the entire country is focused on UConn women's basketball because mm -hmm. we're undefeated. Yeah. People are coming from all over America to do stories on us. When were you aware that we're undefeated and, <laughs> oh my God, it, it, did it ever appear that we're going to play not to lose instead of play to win? I mean, you would think that would be kind of human nature to mm -hmm. be to all of a sudden look up and go wow we're undefeated and just realize like roadrunner going over the cliff and then you realize you're there and you're like wow am i gonna fall am i gonna make it um it, it believe it or not it wasn't something that was talked about in the locker room it wasn't like guys we're undefeated don't blow it it was never really talked about it was just known something we knew something you knew and yeah. you were just gonna again throw the ball up and take it one game at a time and not look ahead and we, we really didn't do that and so you were convinced when the NCAA tournament started you were convinced we were going to win a national championship I don't know if I was convinced completely you always have a little bit of doubt in you but it wasn't something where we were just looking at the undefeated part it's the NCAA tournament part where anything can happen it wasn't just thinking we're undefeated we're undefeated we better win it was the this is, this is the NCAA tournament, anything can happen. We have to, everyone has a little doubt. I think they'd be lying if they didn't. Was there a time during the Virginia game in the final eight mm -hmm. where, and I'll never forget this, obviously, 
they were supposed to be really, really good, or, or they wouldn't be there. Right. We were up, I want to say we were up 19 in the first half. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they stormed back. Right. And we, I, I, I remember saying this to somebody who was sitting next to me. I forget which one of the coaches it was. I said, it's tie score. Weren't we just up 18? They said, no, we were up 19. <laughs> and they came back, and we went into the locker room down. Mm -hmm. And now this team that everybody in America is talking about, what were you talking about? In the locker room? Yeah. I'm surprised CD wasn't hiding in a, in a toilet no, listening. No, no, no. That, was we, a that was a different game. That was a different game. What were you, since you're chatty Kathy, what were you talking about, or did someone else do all the talking? Well, yeah, I usually didn't do all the talking uh, until I was a senior. Right. I let those guys do the talking. But it was like, really? Like, really? We were just up 19, and we blew that. It was just, we actually, our team was good at motivating. We had people that would talk and step up. And, you know, you've had teams that that one person doesn't right. talk, and you don't have that leader. We had that in our team. Right. And we were fortunate to have that. So I didn't have to say boo. It was made very clear in the locker room that we need to get our act together and quick. We I'm did. sure it was made very clear. And, <laughs> and not by me. Right. By right. some persons left unsaid. Mm -hmm. One, both of them who are head coaches now. In, That's right. That's in, right. In the NCAA. The final four, Stanford, mm. I think you had 31 points. You, you Some, told me. Something so, like yeah, something that. like that. And the next day, I got to tell you, we played back to back then, remember? Yeah. The semifinals was yeah. Saturday and the championship mm -hmm. game was on Sunday Saw. in Minneapolis in 1995. And there were people being interviewed that said there's no way Connecticut can win. Yeah. Yeah. So even going into that Tennessee game, mm -hmm. what what was the collective mindset of our team? Because it wasn't like, well, we've won a national championship before. Yeah. We know we can do this. Oh yeah. Whereas Tennessee had. Right. So exactly. what was the mindset? The mindset was a lot of nerves, knowing we just had a big win against Stanford, that gave us some confidence, but at the same time looking at Tennessee. And Tennessee always, back in the day, had the same effect as people who play against Connecticut. Right. And that was a little bit intimidating. I remember we were stretching and they walked right through our stretching yeah, circle. Yeah. Yeah, I, remember I was that. like, really? Like that really made us angry. And all you had to do was do something and you went, Jen angry. Jen, go get him. Yeah, I did, yeah, right? You weren't ready to jump up and go do <laughs> Jen, it. Go get him. Right. You know, you know right. Daiser would be like throw raw meat in the locker room and Jen yeah. was all on it, you yeah. know? Um, so again, it's it's I wasn't as confident as my teammates, but they believed in me and they helped get that confidence out of me. Because I knew how much they believed in me. So I was like, all right. And they, they always brought us together and said, you know, just do what you're good at. Never try to be someone you're not. And don't try to focus on the things you can't do. And we win the game. And we're national champions, 35-0. and 0. We fly back and we land at Bradley Airport and it's Crazy. pandemonium. Crazy. When you walked off that plane, describe the, the scenario. I remember. People who weren't there. I just, I can't even put it into words. It was ridiculous. It was amazing. It was, it blew our minds. We were like, really? This is for us, for women's basketball? For, we've never seen anything like it. All the fans that are there. And it, it just was amazing. And we're on the bus going and, down 91. Yup, and the and people on the overpass. Yeah, yeah, I remember Jamel's like, looking around. She's like, look at there's people on the overpasses. There's people every, is this for us? Yeah. Like we, there's helicopters. There's, I mean, yeah. this doesn't happen. It's like OJ. It's we following <laughs> Rocco down the road. So Chanel was like, this is like OJ. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Right. And it just kind of set this precedent of, of expectations. It's old hat now. They don't do it's that a, anymore. I know. There's they like three people at the anymore. airport yeah, now. They no. don't do that. <laughs> no. It's old well, hat Well, it's now. the first. It was the first. It was the first. Was the and first. there's something about that. I mean, yeah. Don't you think you're, it was special? It was. Some, I mean, you've it won was. so many championships. Absolutely. But you'll always remember the first. I no mean, you'll question. remember all of them, no but question. there's something about that. There was something about the way that happened and mm -hmm. the way that team, yeah, yeah. And how much did your life change after that game, <laughs> after that championship game and after that scenario? Because all of a sudden now, USA Basketball comes along and mm -hmm. looks at you different. Yeah. Uh, you're going into now your, your junior year. Yeah. And that's going to be different because you're being looked at as a leader. Right. And how does that 
all of a sudden make Carol Walters different than she was as a sophomore? Um, I think the expectations I had for myself, knowing that I could play at that level, like like the Stanford game, I didn't play as great in, against Tennessee. No, but <laughs> I didn't want to bring no, that I, up. Yeah, thanks, no, I appreciate didn't. it. No, you um, but just knowing that you can play at that level in that forum, in that stadium, in that pressure, it just kind of made me realize that I, I was capable of it. But it was a different jump for me being an upperclassman now and having to be more vocal and change a little bit and have more confidence. But everything changed after that. It just, it changed the sport, it changed us, it changed our mindset of, this is how it's supposed to be. Now 97 comes around, Rebecca's gone, uh, Jen is gone, you're a senior and you're national player of the year mm. that year. Mm. But we didn't even get to the final four. Don't remind me. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I think it was the worst possible way to end my career. It's losing to them in the Elite Eight. I remember being mad that we were in that bracket together. And that was part of the problem right there. Yeah. Instead of being happy about it, you were mad about it. Yeah, I should have just said, yeah. this is the card that you're dealt, yeah. deal with yeah. it. And we had two guys play well that day, Rita Williams and Nikisha Sales. Yeah. You, not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> Rita couldn't yeah. get the ball into yeah, me. Yeah, right, right. I do that? Should I blame her? <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, That's the worst way to end my career, losing against them and not going to the Final Four. It was not acceptable to end the season like that because we knew what we could do and what we did do. So right. it wasn't acceptable. It's a really bad feeling. Bad taste in your mouth all summer long. Coming up on Gino's Legacy. I have my own thoughts, you know, that I, you know, I don't share unless I'm asked. Oh, all right. So. All right, let's give you some questions. No, one. Oh. I not get carried away here. Two? You get one. NCAA championship, part of a world championship team, yeah. part of an Olympic gold medal team, yeah. a WNBA championship. Mm -hmm. In Houston. There's only six people, I believe, that have ever done that. Yeah. And you're one of them. Yeah. Well, now that we know all about you, yeah. is there something you want to bring up that... Um, to things, you? Oh. You know, um, I have my own thoughts, you know, that I, you know... I don't share unless I'm asked. Oh, all right. So. All right, let's give you some questions. No, one. I, oh. Let's not get carried away here. Two? You get one. Go ahead, maybe a little follow-up. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, this, this might be like Sophie's choice, but if you were to pick a starting five from all your years of the young ladies who have played for you, who would you pick? Why would I pick? It's like picking your favorite kid. Why would I pick? Well, you have to. I'm you have to play some a coaches. basketball no. game. No. And some, if you ask some coaches, pick your favorite starting five. They'll go like this: one, two, three, four, five, because they've only had five great players. Right. So right. I'm fortunate enough that it would be impossible for me to pick. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. it's different. And if you came here expecting me to say, no, I'm well, absolutely, Carol Walter. <laughs> I'm sorry. Didn't to Didn't at all. Okay. Okay. Didn't at all. And you I know. It's, I know. It's not, like. It's, you would definitely be in the top 30. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Grateful. And it's like, it's comparing apples to oranges these days it with is. the way it's they it's play. Different. It's kind it's of a different, different game. Yeah. But I'd like to yeah. think I would be on the bench at least, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> one of these days when I'm done coaching, yeah. I'll put that list out. Yeah. Not right now. All right. Since you want to answer that. And last, um, last question. Let's see. Uh, if you were to pick one thing. I think regret is too strong of a word, mm. but regret that you've had over your years of coaching, if there was one thing you could have changed or gone back, or what would it be? A regret? I don't know if regret is the, If I had to do something word. different. Different, yes. What would I do differently if than what I've done? Yes. Um, I, I've always thought that one of my biggest faults is I'm... Um, incredibly impatient mm. when it comes to things. Okay. I, I, want, I want this and I want it right now. So I want you to go from freshman that doesn't know anything to first team All-American and you better get this done in 10 months <laughs> or I'm gonna be really impatient. Right. And sometimes, you know, and Tina Charles said it, 
uh, it's, it's hard to have things happen before it's time to happen. Mm. So I, I think if I look back, I would say, I, I would be a little more patient and a little more understanding. And that's kind of where I am right now, I think. Yeah, that's I, why I say you're soft. Yeah, I, think I've got, <laughs> I think I've gotten to that point where I am a little more patient. Right. A little more understanding of what players are going through to become really good right. and become right. great. Right. Um, so, yeah, if I look back, that, that would be it. And how important? And throwing you out of practice. Yeah, that's I would re I regret yeah, that. Yeah, that too. I would never do that. I would never how do that. How important is it that everyone comes back? It's like a family. Well, that's, that's part of, that's part of, that's the byproduct of what we do. We don't go in and say, okay, CD, you know, Tanya, Jamel, or Shay, Marissa, what do we have to do to make these guys come back? Right. We just do what we think we need to do to make it work right. for them and for us. And because they enjoy it and they value it, they come back. Yeah. And I, I hope my kids at home do the same thing, and <laughs> I'm sure you hope your kids do the same thing. Yes, I do. First, I hope they leave. Yes, right. <laughs> so come back. I don't want them staying around. Yes, yes. Well, um, Thank you so much, Kara. Um, you know it's important for me to be really nice to you because you're going to be doing the studio uh -huh. yes. about how yes. we're playing. That's so um, I'll be um, I'll be checking. Okay. And the next time we do this show, it'll be reflective on uh, <laughs> on some some other things. But okay. it's been a pleasure. It's been great. It's been phenomenal watching you grow, and uh, I'm really proud of you. Oh, I'm a bit for Clint. Uh, Thank you. Of course.